So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make effects and other extra stuff like that. So first thing I'm going to do is get the down lifters. So I think this one could be nice. Uh, the key of the track is E, so I don't need to pitch it either. I'm just going to scratch it. You want to put down lifters in a similar way you use risers, except that you put them on the other side of the transition. So like that. In the drop, you don't need them. Instead, you're going to use white noise, which I will do later. Then at the end of the drop, you're going to have that. And at the end of the track. So there we go. And I'm going to get another one. Similar to the risers, you want a low one, a high one, and a noise one. So this one sounds like it could be a good low one. And then I'll just dig around for a high one, like this one. And then this one I'll shift like that. Because it's 110 BPM, which is half of 220 BPM, I don't need to change the timing. And just keep it like that and then put it underneath there. So this is the high one. And now I'm gonna go find a noise. There we go. Noise rise. Noise down I mean. This one I'm just gonna adjust so it fades like that. So it's in time with the other ones. Also it's a little quiet. So I'll just normalize it and then I'll turn the volume down so it's roughly matching the volume of the others. Yeah. So again, do that. And now I can start compressing them, and EQing them, and all that stuff. First, I'll name and color them. Okay. So, and then I'll do the buffs as usual. So now they're all colored and named, and I can do the low one first. I don't know why I thought Studio's lagging so much. So anyway, cut out the sub as usual, and then reduce the highs, because that's going to be filled by the other two. It's kind of bubbly, which is pretty cool. Uh, then I'm gonna compress OTT. So I think that's good. Next, the high one. The high one, again, cut out the sub. Then I'll reduce the mids. Like that. I think that's good. I'll just boost that a bit to emphasize that frequency. In the noise. So again, removing the sub. Use the high. And I should turn this one down a little bit actually. So next, I'm gonna do the bus. So that's gonna be first the compression. Again, not too much. You want to keep that fading out. And then reverb. The reverb can be kind of high actually, because this sound already has a nice big decay, so if you add 
the view curve, it doesn't really mess it up that much, like it, unlike it would for a, a sound with a shorter delay. Then OTT. I'm going to turn down this one a little bit. Yeah, that sounds a lot cleaner. Then an EQ. That's not an EQ. I'm just going to reduce those frequencies just a tiny bit because I feel they need to be slightly reduced. I should actually put that before the compressor, and then that is done. So I'll just reduce the volume a bit. There we go. So next I'm going to put in noise, so noise will just be behind all of the bits of the track where there's not much happening, such as this one. It's just a small sound you probably won't really notice, but it's there, and I think it's good. Triple oscillator. So for this it really doesn't matter what sound you put in, because it's all going to be removed and replaced with noise, so I'm just going to put in just that note. And this is going to be the noise filter. And there you go, noise. So then I just choose something that I like. Paper is one that I use a lot, as well as uh, rainforest. There was another one I use a lot. Oh yeah, rain concrete. That one's pretty good too. And campfire is another one I like. So you can hear if you turn down the mix, you'll get that sound back. So you just turn it up all the way. And then I can process that. Take out the sub. You can also take out a lot of the lows and the mids because it's really the high end that you're focusing on. Then reverb. This is background stuff, so quite a lot of reverb. And then another EQ. Again, cutting the sub. as well as the high mids. So you can hear it sounds like this. I need a little bit more stereo, so I can do that with Ozone Imager. Not too much though, that might be too much. There we go. So that just adds a little bit more to those empty sections. Next, reverse reverbs. So to make a reverse reverb, you're going to need the lead. Then you take the first note, chop it off, and now turn off. So now you're going to turn off the reverb and delay on the lead chain. And just for now, we're going to put it on this chain. So everything you can do here is temporary, and you're going to undo it later. 
uh, first delay. Now you want it to be really big, so I'm going to go and get a nice big preset. Uh, something like that sounds good, although I'll have a bit more high and less low. See a nice big delay reverb, and then I'll just put that in Edison. Actually, this one might be too long, don't want it too long. Not too short though. So I think that would be good. So then I just want to cut off the main note. So it's just the delay reverb. Then I'll just make it fade out a little nicer and then reverse it so there we go now I can put that in the track So it's good to use in these empty sections as well. So now what I'm going to do is name and color and then on this you want to put even more reverb. So I'm going to use the channel with the reverb already on it. Then I'll just load up a slightly tamer preset. Something like this, I think, is nice. So, let's mix. Maybe an eighth note. Yes, that sounds good. Uh, after that, EQ. Oh yeah, and don't forget to turn the reverb and delay back on for the leads. So I'll just take out the sub. Then I'll add a little bit more high end, I think. Yeah, there we go. Be a bit more action. Nice. So you want this to be quite sparkly. Which I think now it is. And then you can just reduce its volume. Then just put that in the empty sections. So it just adds a tiny thing, which makes it more atmospheric. You can also add this in the main break. I think that sounds good. You could also have it leading into the main melody. And so it kind of introduces the melody.
and now white noise. So I use this when I want to have a riser, but it's in a section like a drop where it's going to sound out of place. So I'll use a white noise riser instead. So cut out the sub, and then the important part here is for this filter. You can automate it. So first I like to put this peak thing, then a pattern, and then again a nice long note. So you want to put this in the drops, like that. And in this one, then in this one, also, there should be a down lifted here. So at the moment, it's literally just noise. It's very quiet because I filtered most of it out. And it's going to be automated. So it does this nice fade out. And then I'm going to do the same but reversed. And that will make the fade in. Then I'm going to put reverb. Uh, not too much reverb on this, and it's quite important to cut out the lows. You want to put it before the EQ actually. Uh, turn off the high cuts as well because it's white noise, it's going to have a lot of highs, and it doesn't really matter if the reverb has a lot of highs. I'm just going to copy that automation over to the other white noises. This white noise will get side chained as well, except that instead of doing it on the main side chain, I side chain this one differently. The main side chain I'm going to do when I'm mixing the track, but for the white noise. I'll just put this towel filter and then have the LFO set like this. And that is the white noise done. Actually, it fits out a little quickly, so let's do it. There we go. And then the final thing, effects kicks. So effects kicks are those screamy sounding kicks that you hear in fills. So to make those, you just want to get your main kick. I think putting one here would be good. And then make unique. And link it to a channel. So the way to make an effects kick is to pretty fastest. This is pretty much the only time I ever use fastest. Just turn it up all the way. 
in an EQ. And let's make a nice big spike around 500 to 600. Sometimes with two, I think two is usually enough. Then fastest, max, and a second fastest on the default. See, so it sounds like an up tempo kick. So now I'm gonna just automate the frequency. And you do that for the other one as well. You can just link that. Uh, at the moment, I think that is good. Next reverb. Plenty of it. And a compressor. And camel crusher. Can turn on fat mode. I think a low cut might also help. There we go. And then you can mess around with this automation. So you'll just chuck it in. in several places around the track. One common pattern is when it goes up and then down. So kind of like this. Actually, to clean up the reverb, I'm going to use a peak controller. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn the reverb down whenever the kicks play. Like that. So that just makes it a bit cleaner. I think I'll increase the frequency actually, just make that a bit higher. And you want to just keep messing around until you have a nice thing. You can also use them like kick rolls. So I'm just going to stick one here after this kick roll. And then make this one slightly different. I think that sounds good. The important thing is not to go too high or too low in frequency. Just small changes will make a big difference to this. And I think I'll put some in the intro as well. I'll take this kick roll out. Because I think this would be better. Yeah. 
Yep, that sounds good. And I'll put that one in the other. I'll put that one in the outro as well. I think maybe turning the level down. Yeah, that's a bit better. And this section doesn't really need burn. means that the track is actually now done. I just need to mix and master it, so that will happen next time. So yeah, have a nice day, goodbye.